Welcome to this demonstration video of AutoFlight Logic's user interface for the Autopilot autonomous software for both the Phantom 3 and the Inspire 1. To learn more about the overall capabilities of the Autopilot software or how to use the other modes, take the time to read through Autopilot's Flight School and watch the other capabilities and how-to videos that are available. The Autopilot user interface is extremely flexible and well designed both for the iPad as well as the iPhone. As you will see, it maximizes the use of the screen, both in portrait and in landscape mode, allowing you to decide what information is displayed versus giving you a view of the map and or the camera. In this video, I'm going to focus on the iPad user interface. Similar to the DJI GO app, using the autopilot on the iPad simply gives you more room to see what's going on. However, I will show how effective this application is while running it on the iPhone. As has been mentioned in other videos, while Autopilot will run on a range of iOS devices, we recommend either using an iPad Air 2 or the iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, both because it has the best, best processor in the iOS devices and because it provides a barometer which is used to accurately calculate altitude of the object being followed. Let's get started. When you start up Autopilot, you'll be brought to a page which lists all the available modes on the left-hand side and the pre-flight features you can customize on the right-hand side. In the top left, you can see what aircraft you're using. If you're using multiple aircrafts, for example a Phantom 3 and an Inspire, be sure to select the right aircraft or you'll experience strange things with focus and the gimbal when you're flying and using, iPad, and using Autopilot. I'm going to select my Inspire 1. Below that, you have access to the entire Flight School uh, manual. And I recommend you take the time to read through the manual as a refresher to this video, as well as a how-to to learn more of the advanced features that are available. Below that is the settings menu that I will take you through in a separate video. Each of the eight modes are then listed. Black box, which captures audio and flight telemetry. Focus, which allows you to control the aircraft while autopilot controls the gimbal. Follow, which directs the aircraft to follow a leader at a bearing angle, distance, and altitude. Orbit, which will do automated clockwise or counterclockwise circles around a center point. Target, which lets you finger fly your aircraft to a specific location and altitude. Zipline, which builds on target by letting the aircraft fly between two locations. Intercept, which allows you to use your iOS device as a laser pointer. Your quad capture will then intercept the line created by the device. And Mimic, which will tilt your aircraft and gimbal based upon the motion of the iOS device. As you can see, each time that I select a, a mode, the pre-flight information on the left changes. Each of the modes also has a basic, an intermediate, and an advanced mode setting which provides additional levels of flexibility based upon the type of shot that you're trying to create. For example, in focus mode, and I'm under the basic settings, I can have the camera focused on me, the operator, or a point of interest. When I move to intermediate, I have additional options, focusing based upon where I touch, the direction of the aircraft, etc. As you can see, when I move to advanced, additional strategies are made available from device, the RC as well as the operator and point of interest. We also have the ability to account for offsets. For example, you're in a water ski boat, but you want the camera to focus on the water skier behind the boat. This approach is consistent throughout the entire user interface. As you go from mode to mode, while the options might change a little bit, all of them have a basic, an intermediate, and an advanced mode. For more details on each of these modes, watch the individual mode videos or read about them in flight school. When you are ready to fly, be sure to first calibrate your quadcopter. I personally prefer to do this in the DJI GO app and then go back to autopilot. After that, you can open the flight dashboard. In landscape mode, the customizable information is on the left, the camera is on the top, and the map is on the bottom. And then on the left and right, you'll see the telemetry information. On the left-hand side is the telem telemetry information for the quadcopter. On the right-hand side is the telemetry information for the gimbal. To switch to a different mode, you can either select the mode button on the left and select a different mode here so I can move 
from orbit to focus. Or you can select done and come back to the main screen and select a different mode this way. Go back into the, the uh, flight dashboard here. When you are ready to use autopilot, you'll press start engage sequence on the bottom. Autopilot will then take you to a pre-flight checklist where it will ask you to set the altitude reference and move the aircraft to a safe position. I'm using an iPad Air 2, so I'm going to use the dynamic altitude setting. I'm going to confirm the barometer pressure. I'm in follow mode, so I'm going to hit continue, and it's going to count down to engage. Three, two, one, and it automatically will engage for me. Once engaged, I'm ready to fly and use the software. You can see in the center that the camera is recording. You can also see all the various map markers based upon the mode that you're using, where the aircraft is focused, the zip line points, where the aircraft is, the direction of the aircraft, etc. For more information about these, check out Flight School. Throughout this video, I've been using an iPad Air in landscape mode in default settings. However, there is a great deal of flexibility in terms of what information is displayed. For example, if I click on More, I can change it from the dark theme to a light theme. Switch it back to the dark theme. I can also change the amount of telemetry data displayed from, this is medium right now, I can set it to high. And now I've got a lot more information available to me on both the, the gimbal and the, uh, the quadcopter. Or I can set the telemetry data to none which gives me more space for my camera and my map. If I want to make even more space available to my camera and map, I can hide the inline controls. Now I've got a full screen view of my camera. If I click this button in the lower left hand corner, it switches to the map. So I go from the map to the camera, back to the map again. Unlike the DJI app, we can also tilt the tablet from landscape to portrait. In portrait mode, the camera remains up top and the map is below. I prefer this mode after I've hidden the inline controls because it's a great way to get a half screen view of both the map and the camera. Here's what it looks like if I include the inline controls in portrait mode. And then back again to landscape mode. If you ever want to stop autopilot, you can do three things. The quickest thing you can do is to flick the switch on the transmitter from F to P. Once you do that, the aircraft will hover and will give you full control to fly it. You can also click on pause in the upper right hand corner, which will stop the autopilot action. You can then hit resume to start it again. Or you can push to skip disengage, which turns off the mode altogether and allows you to hit done and go back and select a different mode. Using autopilot on the iPhone is very similar to using it on the iPad, just with less real estate. There's a portrait mode, there is a landscape mode. When you select the mode, you can drill down and access the exact same features you, as you can on the iPad. There is a basic setting, an intermediate setting, as well as an advanced setting. You can change the focus from the operator to a point of interest. Depending on the mode you're in, you can select and change any of the settings, both portrait and landscape mode. Once you enter the flight dashboard, you have full access to the telemetry data, or if you wish, click More, and you can turn the telemetry detail off. When you're ready to engage, click on the Engage button, select the altimeter reference, calibrate, and hit Continue. The biggest difference between the iPhone and the iPad is that when engaged, the details are not immediately available to you. You have to click the button in the lower right hand corner, which will bring up the detailed screen. Bottom line, once engaged, you can go from the portrait to the landscape screen and have the exact same experience as you did on your iPad. I hope that this quick review of Auto Flight Logic's Autopilot's user interface helped you and I look forward to seeing videos from you in the near future.